Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today's game is Wheel of Fortune 2.0, which was a 1987 shareware release from Robert Pyle, who programmed the game in GFA Basic, which he was a big fan of, judging by the on-disc documentation. It appears to have been an entirely solo development effort, though as is the case with most public domain and shareware programs from the period, there's not a ton of information about the game's history or who Robert Pyle was. And according to the Atari Mania database, this is the only game he was credited with. The game can be played with two or three players, but we'll just be simulating a multiplayer game today. While not a game that will blow your socks off with its technical proficiency or use of the 16-bit power of the Atari ST, I can see this having been a good fun game to gather around the computer and play back in 1987. So, let's go play Wheel of Fortune. Okay, here we are with Wheel of Fortune version 2.0. Um, I suspect, aside from this little introduction sequence, this is probably going to be a fairly quiet episode, but um, we do have a bit of music though. So, this program is released into the public domain as shareware. If you enjoy the program, your donation, $10 suggested, will allow program support and new quality software development. Uh, so that's nice. So, this is uh, evidently the shareware version. Um, this this particular copy I'm playing is on one of the automation menu discs. Um, don't know if the registered version is still out there at all or indeed if there's any differences between the registered version and the shareware version other than getting rid of that nag screen um because this was st still sort of the relatively early days of shareware being used as a distribution method it was a bit more common in the st age to just distribute stuff as public domain software so you would um make your piece of software you would send it out to a bunch of places and they would distribute it for you and um yeah a lot of people then sort of put in little messages saying oh, if you like this then you might want to donate for it but uh sort of the the art of what shareware became in sort of the ms dos pc and windows era um was just sort of getting started around here right anyway welcome to wheel of fortune how many will be playing two or three um technically just one uh but i'm going to pretend to be two people so we'll say two please enter your names eight letters max player number one pete player number two midori is the above information correct yes right and then we have a selection of puzzle files that we can choose from uh, so there's a bunch included uh, but I believe you can also make your own with this software, uh, either with this piece of software or a, a bit of software that comes included with it. Uh, let's just go with MISC01 for the minute. This file has been released into the public domain by Robert Pyle. I hope you enjoy it. Right, let's see if I can remember how to play Wheel of Fortune. Um, having watched a large number of game grumps episodes where they play wheel of fortune you'd think i'd be able to remember how to play wheel of fortune by now so it's meteor's turn first so we press the spin button that chooses a random strength you can also i think you click it with the right button to choose the amount of power that you do okay so she's on 450 it is a quotation uh, and this is from the old era of Wheel of Fortune where you could sort of pick all the letters except the uh, the vowels to begin with. Actually, it's only the last round that affects, isn't it? Anyway, let's go for S. Two S's. Now, despite what it looks like up there, that means Midori dash $900. That doesn't mean Midori has minus $900. <laughs> anyway, um... All right, so it's Midori's turn again. So she can either solve the puzzle or buy a vowel. Uh, let's try the spin. If we hold down the right button there, you can choose to spin it soft or hard. And that determines how quickly, or rather how long the wheel spins for in the corner. Because you notice there's not really much difference in the speed of it. This game is written in the form of basic, remember? Uh, and I don't think it was compiled. Um, so that's why the, the sort of speed of things is fairly sluggish and the screen update isn't uh, the smoothest it could be. 
but you know it's wheel of fortune it doesn't need to be super good looking let's go for a bit of our action go she's cleaning up right spin soft spin or moderate spin there we go let's go now but yeah i played a few games um public domain games i think mostly uh, that looked a bit like this throughout the ST era and you know they're not as good looking as sort of the commercial software out there but it didn't really matter because they were just fun to play I remember there was a really nice public domain version of Monopoly I used to really like playing because it had a good um, single player mode and it meant you could play Monopoly by yourself which is not something you can do under normal circumstances and obviously these days i tend to uh, avoid playing monopoly generally whenever possible uh, but when i was a kid and didn't know any better then yeah being able to play monopoly single player against the atari st was great it's a shame this doesn't have a single player mode of some description but i guess i guess this kind of game it's a little bit more difficult to to make a convincing single player mode because obviously the the computer knows the answer already so any sort of attempt to simulate it not knowing is going to come across as uh, a bit artificial right what else should we go for what about an n god she's doing brilliantly four thousand five hundred five thousand dollars it's still your turn do i know the answer yet no off we go then will pete ever get a turn let's find out <laughs> oh don't lose it don't lose it oh lucky now we're getting into trickier Hmm. Oh, I know what it is. Carefully now for five thousand four hundred dollars quotation and the the oh no no I don't know I don't know what the second word is shit why didn't I think of that uh, oh yes I do know. It. We have a winner! Whew, I was lucky. I was lucky there wasn't a time limit on that, wasn't there? It's Pete's turn at last. It's a thing for $5,000. Oh, that's just what the wheel is on right now. Pete spins first. Spin! well then <laughs> it had to happen didn't it I'm going to get destroyed by my own imaginary friend oh well $400 S no S's my god right come on Pete That's the bankrupt. Big money, big prizes. I love it. Uh, what about T? Two T's. Doesn't really help. I do like the little flavour text that comes up in that box there. I just wish there was a slightly a slightly wider selection of them because it says big money big money every single time 900 very nice uh choose wisely let's let's go for r just the one oh what could that be see thing is such a vague category that it's uh 
tricky to know what it is. Anyway, spin. Past the bankrupt, thank you. Oh, there's another bankrupt. Stop. Thank you. Uh, um, um, how about a P? No, an N. Okay. Getting there. Um, I'm going to buy a vowel. I'm going to buy an E. Hmm. Not super helpful. Well, on we go. Let's go for P this time. No P's! Disappointing. Come on, Midori, you're probably going to clean up now, aren't you? No, what I, what I was saying before about the um, um, public domain pieces of software like this, uh, sort of quite simple presentation and but solid gameplay. Yeah, the nice thing about those is that they were often really good things to play with other people, um, especially people who weren't quite so familiar with the idea of computer games and that sort of thing. So this game for example would be something that i would have probably spent some time playing with my parents or or with uh, friends who were less familiar with i say friends who were less familiar with computer games most of my friends were familiar with computer games by the the very nature of similar people tending to gravitate towards one another but um no oof oof uh what could it be? What could it be? G. No. Yeah, so if I had friends over or I was like being babysat or something because while the ST was a thing I would have been young enough to have a babysitter. This is probably something I would have busted out to uh, to play with people because it would have been fun because it's really easy to understand everyone knows how to play Wheel of Fortune and the actual controls for making the game do stuff are really simple Just click here type your answer in don't damn it lose a turn L. Ooh. Ooh. Doesn't help. Um. Nope. Still no idea. else could go with that what about a c no c's We're running out of like feasible letters at this point Gotta be a vowel to begin with, isn't it? Okay. No. <laughs> Gonna have to buy a vowel if we can actually get another answer at this point, but uh, it's proving tricky. Two fifty. What about a W? No. 
if you're watching this and you know what the answer is, I can only apologise profusely. Because I know how frustrating it is to know the answer to a puzzle that someone else is trying to solve. And them clearly not having a clue what it is. B. Okay. So I don't know what that first word is, but I'm going to buy an O. No. Okay. So that last word isn't root as I thought it might be. Oh god. It can't it can't be any of these letters. No, of course it's not. By a vowel. By an E. Oh. Whoops. I'm a moron. because uh, of course E's been used already because it's on the bloody board, isn't it? Uh, Alright, what about A? No. U. No U's. What the fuck is it then? Um, a? Hey! God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, that must have been irritating for you. I'm very sorry. Right. Phrase. Oh. Choose wisely. N. No ends. No fifteen hundred dollars for me to re. <laughs> well, I'm getting too invested in this. I want myself to win, even though both players are me. It's it's an underdog thing. Uh, what about F? Is that first word of? No. No, no, no. I should have just gone for the safe option. This is where there's no S's, isn't there? Is as by vowel. As something, something, something. Uh, spin. Oh, no, I think I know it. I think I know it. Yep, yeah, I got it. Winner! A big winner is Meadery with $6,800. Bonus round. Congratulations, Meadery. You have the chance to win $25,000 that don't exist. Choose five consonants and a vowel. You will have 15 seconds. Oh, God. Okay. Choose five consonants. Uh, so obviously it's going to be uh, S T. N L N of L E Oh, no, 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 You can't go back. Bollocks. It's West Side Story. 
but <laughs> well that fuck that didn't it best way theory sorry that is not correct of course it was of course it was I'm a moron better luck next time still I still beat myself want to print out the scores no because I do not have a printer connected but I guess it saves your uh, your high scores, which is nice. Want to print out the list? No, but very generous of you to offer. And that's a very polite dialogue box. Would you like to play another game? Double question mark. Please, or not now. This program has been released into the public domain as shareware by Robert H. Pyle. All rights are reserved, 1987. There are also a number of puzzle files available from me. There are five files in a collection for $15. Okay, so that's how he was making some money from this. Write for a list of the various collections and their contents. Pre-internet days, remember, so no means of uh, sort of uh, pulling up a web page. The source code is available for $15. Hard copy for study only. Um, that was quite a popular thing to do for... Uh, public domain and shareware stuff that carried on into sort of the MS DOS and Windows era a bit, where they would sell source code, often for sort of double the price of the the registered version of the software. So that if you were learning to program or you wanted to use some of the techniques that uh, you'd seen used in the program and you thought work quite nicely and would be useful for your own programs, you could, you could get the source code from them. Um, but in this case, you'd pay $15 and you get a printout of the source code. You wouldn't get it on a, on a disc or anything like that. So if you wanted to pull it apart and stuff like that, you have to actually type it in yourself. Okay, if you reached on Delphi, Chili Dog, or on Genie, our pile, or contact Robert H. Pile, PO Box 947, Weimar, Texas, 78962. Um, if you're not familiar with Delphi and Genie, those were both online services. So although the internet was not especially widespread at this time, um, there were online services you could dial up to and connect to some of them had very loose internet connectivity so some of them would, let, would allow you to send internet email but because so few people had direct access to the internet it tended to be um, sort of mostly internal messages between people so people on Delphi would talk to Delphi people on Genie would talk to Genie and so on and it wasn't at all uncommon for people to access multiples of these services because that would allow them to uh, develop a wider audience in different ways in different regions and that sort of thing similar sort of idea to bulletin board systems where you dial in you'd send messages you maybe download and upload stuff uh, but in the case of Delphi and Genie those were much larger scale services that multiple people could dial into at once all connected at the same time and they tended to have a lot more information on them than your typical bulletin board system anyway yeah that was that was an interesting little game and uh, interesting scope to um sort of talk about various things that were going on at that time here's the other software i was talking about that comes with um the wheel of fortune software so you've got the editor and the file coder and that allows you to um create your own puzzles and that sort of thing let's just have a quick look at the editor and see what that does nothing at all apparently because there's nothing we can open all right back to this what about file lister select an uncoded file oh presumably those um presumably the files that are on there are already coded so file coder file must be a pz type file and encoded okay so i guess that means you can't edit the built-in ones maybe yeah i don't know i'd have to look into the documentation a bit more uh, to find out a bit more about that in fact let's just have a quick look at this now i'm just going to switch this into uh, medium resolution just so the document is a bit easier to read and where is the document real 2.0 doc let's see what it has to say it's saying please documentation for wheel 2.0.prog wh shell.prog file edit prog file code.prog file list.prog blah 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 uh, 
starting the game. Yes, we know all this. Yeah, we know how to play the game. Alright, here we are. The WH Shell program is a simple shell program from which you can access the various programs associated with the Wheel of Fortune game. The file editor, the file encoder, the file lister, or the main game program. The program delimit is not accessible. It must be run from the desktop. So file edit is the puzzle file editor for the Wheel of Fortune program family. It operates as a WYSIWYG editor for both creating and editing puzzle files. The files that it creates are not encoded so that they are easy to review, proofread, and edit. Oh, okay. So with the um, with the editor, you can actually create one from scratch. You you put in your own um, file name that doesn't already exist. Let's just have a very quick look at that before we before we go on can we run this in medium resolution let's find out no all right back to low resolution it is i think this is the first time i've shown off medium resolution in atari st a to z so you should feel excited about that because i don't know medium resolution is cool right WH shell editor. So then I guess we just go Pete F1 edit a specific puzzle number. All right, so let's say How do you say what category that is? F10 is except puzzle. Oh, please enter the category. Okay, video game. All right, then another one. Uh, so let's think of actually, can you put extra spaces in? Yes, you can. So you can lay it out however you want. Okay into your game you can see where my tastes lie can't you uh, RPG let's be a bit more specific uh, space invaders shoot em up uh, pole position racing game uh, and then I don't know think of another game quick uh, star raiders best game <laughs> alright so then Presumably you can do F1. Yeah, so you can do F1 to go back to an older one. Uh, you can accept that, or presumably you can just please enter the category video game. Yes. Oh god, you have to go all the way back through the. Oh no, you, no, you don't. No, you don't. Puzzle number eight. That puzzle has not been entered yet. Seven. Okay, so you have to remember how far you've got. All right, uh, let's stop and end the program. So then, from there, presumably we can do file lister. And it can get very confused when there's no printer connected. Anyway, <laughs> I 
I think we get the idea of what's going on there. So, yeah, a really nice implementation of Wheel of Fortune there. Not the most graphically impressive thing by any means, but, you know, it's not trying to be and it doesn't need to be. It's just a simple, solid implementation of Wheel of Fortune with some customization options and the ability to send off and get some uh, custom puzzle packs for you for yourself to enjoy as well. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty solid. I like that. Um, so if I ever need to play Wheel of Fortune on the Atari ST with people if we can ever see friends ever again this uh, seems to be a good means of making that happen anyway let's leave it there for today as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next time